Now, from your local election headquarters, this is a special Election Day edition of Local 4 News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Needleman. And I'm Ann Sterling. Thanks for choosing Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. A long election season is about to come to an end. We're hours away from finding out how your votes break down in this unprecedented year of the pandemic. It is Election Day with your local election headquarters. Now, polls in Illinois will be open for about two more hours. We begin our coverage tonight on that side of the river. Local 4's Eric Zizich is live in Rock Island with more on how voter turnout is looking in Rock Island County. Eric? Jim, in there have been people trickling in to vote today at the Rock Island County building, but it wasn't like what we saw yesterday during early voting, where there was a line that went clear towards the end of the block. Now it's pointing towards some historic voter turnout. Today I spoke to the Chief Deputy County Clerk, Nick Camlin, who tells me they've already gotten 48% turnout from early voting heading into today. That's for both in person and mail in. That's a county record. In Illinois, more than 3.6 million people already cast their ballots in early voting. And to put that in perspective, that's more than two out of five registered voters. So that's 1.8 million people who voted early in person and another 1.8 million who voted early by mail. And it's expected to lead to higher totals here in Rock Island County. Just shy of 63,000 people cast their ballot back in 2016. Now, we won't know the final tallies until all of the precincts have reported. Polling is open until 7 o'clock here in Rock Island County. Live here in Rock Island, Eric Zizich, Local 4 News. Eric, thank you. Turning now to some key races voters are deciding in Illinois, we begin with the U.S. Senate race. Democrat Dick Durbin seeks his fifth term in office. He's challenged by Republican Mark Curran. Curran's a lawyer who served as Lake County Sheriff from 2006 to 2018. Another race is for the Illinois 17th Congressional District. That seat currently held by Congresswoman Sherry Bustos. She is seeking her fifth term on Capitol Hill and is currently the chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Her challenger, you see right there, Republican Esther Joy King, is now a captain on the Rock Island Arsenal and also practices law in East Moline. We're also keeping our eye on a key state representative race. District 72 serves Rock Island County in Springfield. Democrat Mike Halpin is the incumbent. Republican Glenn Evans is his challenger tonight. Voters in Rock Island County will also cast their vote for the next state's attorney. The Democrat Dora Villarreal wants to keep the job she was appointed to after John McGee became a judge. Republican Kathleen Bailey is her challenger. Now, Bailey has run a pretty aggressive negative campaign. Local Force Leah Sims joins us live with a closer look at that race. Leah? Jim, and I gotta tell you, this race is the most contentious matchup in the local election. As many of you may remember, the incumbent Dora Villarreal was appointed to the position back in 2019 by the Rock Island County Board. So, as you can imagine, she's hoping that she can hang on tight to her seat. Now, she says if she is elected, the aggressive agenda plan she continues, she is hoping that it will tap more into the digital realm and will allow digital case files to be shared between her office, the defense counsel, and law enforcement. One more thing to point out, she's also bilingual so she's hoping that that will give her an advantage and will benefit her in this election. Now, on the other hand, her opponent, Kathleen Bailey, was inspired to run for state's attorney office so she could advocate for victims and make a difference here in this community. She says if she's elected, she plans to establish a veterans court as well as recommend no probation for firearm offenses. So there you have it. You have two different candidates with two different standpoints, both vying for the same spot. So it's just going to be really interesting, Jim and Ann, to see how this is going to play out and to see which way voters are going to sway to. But you you know, as those election results uh, come in, you know that we have you covered here on Local 4. But for now, live here in Rock Island, for your local election headquarters, Aaliyah Sims, back to you. Aaliyah, thank you. We will be here all night. Voters in Illinois also getting to decide on a constitutional amendment. This has been a controversial subject. It would have a major impact on how voters in Illinois get taxed. Now, Earl, Illinois currently has a flat income tax. Everyone pays the same rate. That would change if this amendment passes and does need a supermajority of 60% yes vote. That would change Illinois to a graduated income tax system. The rate increases for people who make more money. Anyone below $10,000 in income would be taxed at 4.75%. People who make more than a million dollars would be taxed at 7.99% for every dollar more than a million dollars earned. Those due rates do vary in between those income levels. Now, Iowa, of course, has a few races we're watching tonight as well. Senator Joni Ernst is looking to hang on to the seat that she has held now since 2015. 
Democrat Teresa Greenfield, her challenger, runs a small real estate company out of Des Moines. This is one of the most expensive Senate races in U.S. history. The Center for Responsive Politics indicates more than $234 million has been spent in this campaign. Another race is for Iowa's 2nd Congressional District. The winner takes a seat being vacated by outgoing Congressman Dave Loebsack. And Democratic Rita Hart is from Wheatland. She is a teacher. She has that background, and she's also a farmer. She was the running mate of Democratic gubernatorial candidate Fred Hubble in 2018. Tonight, she faces Republican Marionette Miller Meeks of Atumwa. Miller Meeks is a doctor by trade and used to be Iowa's director of public health. Now to Iowa State Legislature. This for the 93rd District in the House. It serves East Davenport and the west portion of Bettendorf. Let's take a look right here. Democratic Phyllis Thede has represented this district since 2009 now, more than 10 years. Republican Mike Vondron is CEO of Town Communications in Davenport is the challenger tonight. Well, there's also the race for the 94th district in the Iowa House. It covers Bettendorf and parts of North Davenport. Incumbent Republican Gary Moore seeks a third term. He is challenged by Democrat Marie Gleason. Polls in Iowa will be open for almost another four hours before closing at 9 o'clock. Early voting, though, began on October 5th, so today polls haven't been as busy as usual. Local 4's Zachary Winicky live in Davenport with more on this angle. Zach, good evening. Yeah, Jim, and it's far less busy here than in years past. As you can see, there's absolutely no line behind me, and that's because of early voting. Scott County Commissioner of Elections, Roxana Moore, says that last night there was a line wrapped around this building until about 7, and because of things like that, early voting numbers are way up. Mort says they just finished counting over 62,000 early ballots this afternoon, and that doesn't even count the ones that are still coming in the mail today. In 2016, there were only 43,000 early ballots. But she expects voter turnout to be pretty much the same as most years. That's about 73% of registered voters casting their ballot, though that is higher than in 2016 when only 68% came out. Mort added she's happy to see the residents of Scott County doing their civic duty, even with all the challenges. And if you haven't cast your ballot yet, there's still plenty of time. Iowa polls close at 9 p.m. Uh, and once again, there's absolutely no line behind me. And that's pretty much the case with most polling places around Scott County. So if you go, the process should be fairly quick. In Davenport, Zachary Winicky, Local 4 News. All right, Zachary, thank you. Early voting surging across not only Illinois and Iowa, but across the country, too. We will be gathering results for dozens of races happening all over our region tonight. Yeah, you'll find all the results completely updated throughout the night online at ourquadcities.com. Many young people are getting out to the polls for the first time this election. A survey by Harvard University shows a record number of 18 to 29 year olds who plan to vote this election. Local force Michaela Huchal reports it was important for a couple of young voters to get involved for the first time. For first time voters like Karen Ambris, getting out to the polls means being a role model to others. It was a great um, kind of responsibility for me to go out and vote. Um, and set like an example for my family and my siblings. She said voting helped her take a stand on issues that are important to her. Coming from a immigrant family, immigrant parents, I think that's one of the important things for me. Ambris is one of the many casting their vote for the first time. Reports from across the country are showing a record number of young voters and the voters that we spoke with today said they are excited to use their voice and vote. I'm very excited to be able to get the opportunity to vote. Mariah Martinez from Davenport says more young people are paying attention. With the voting, um, our generation has been speaking up and pushing out that we will come to vote and we're going to make our voices heard. Elena Vallejo voted today in Rock Island and had this message for young voters. Vote because it's going to change your future, our future. Um, you know, a lot of older people, it, it won't impact them as much, but this is our future. Using their voice for the future. Michaela Hughes Shaw, Local 4 News. Well, you certainly could not use the weather as an excuse for avoiding the polls today. An absolutely picture-perfect day, not only for November, but any time of year for me, Andy. Absolutely, and that sweet spot of yours in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And, Jim, this is probably just the beginning. Now that we hit 73 today, I think it's safe to say we'll have several more days in the 70s coming up this week in November. It's out of the ordinary. It's a little unusual, but a lot of people very happy about it. We weren't that far away from the record high for this date at 77. We were way above the normal high, which is 56. I'll let you know how long these 70s for highs hang around. Plus, we'll get set to give away some more free food when we play weather trivia next on Local 4 News at 5. WHBF is local for you.